Good morning, 8th and 9th grade. I hope you are um, doing well. And after a day of break, or I don't know what you call that, vacation, uh, maybe you did schoolwork yesterday, and maybe you weren't able to get the message until it was too late, and I do say sorry for that. Let me give you a little explanation of what happened. Yesterday morning, when electricity was off, uh, I was trying to, to make a hotline message or put on a hotline message that school is, is canceled for today because of no electricity, and the hotline message would not go through. It would not let me access our, um, our account. So I worked on that, uh, talked to Anthony, and he tried it. He couldn't get it to go either. And then there had been some fraud in the system, and so everybody was shut down. So we had to go back into the system and change it. And it was about 3.30 yesterday afternoon when I finally got it up and running again that we could uh, send hotline messages. So anyhow, that's the reason you didn't get a hotline message. I try to text all of you, and I don't have your text numbers or your phone numbers, so that was difficult. I looked on the calendar, and some of them I text your dad, some of them text your mom. Uh, I didn't know how to reach you all, but I told the other teachers to text their students, so maybe you got it about three or four different ways. Uh, yeah, that's just because of the hotline system being down. Anyhow, this morning, uh, it's April the 10th, and we are going to do yesterday's work today. So if you look at your schedule, the schedule that was on for Friday, we'll move those math lessons and, and things on to the next week. But uh, for science, I am going to do a lesson today in science, just as if it were Thursday. And then Monday, we'll also do another lesson in science. So yeah, uh, yeah. How, how'd you make out yesterday without electricity? Um, I don't know, maybe you, maybe you had electricity, but our electric went off uh, Wednesday evening after that storm went through about 9.30 or 9.15, electric went off. And we were out without electric until nine o'clock yesterday evening. Um, on Thursday evening at nine o'clock, our electric come back on. And, Wow, were we ever glad for convenience um, of electricity. We, we didn't have water. We, we didn't have electric. Um, yeah, you wouldn't believe how primitive it was at our house. But we survived. It made us thankful. We hauled water from, from the creek. And we hauled water from our neighbors to drink. And yeah, we made it just fine. I'll tell you what though, whew, it sure feels good to have a shower this morning. Yeah, if you are looking at science, let's get the science lesson, not the news. We're on page 358 to 362. We'll go on to up to the study guide, and then I hope to do the study guide on Monday and test Wednesday of next week, which I'll put new schedules down there for you to pick up this weekend. Uh, we've been talking about sound waves, uh, frequencies, uh, we talked about last time we were talking about how that a low pitch has low frequency and then a high pitch has high frequency or high waves, tall waves, and they're close together. The low pitch is just slow. Oh yeah, you remember the wavelength is from the top of one wave to the top of the next one. The crest, trough, crest. Got that? I'm just doing a review here. Uh, now today, we're going to talk about decibels or amplitude. Have you ever heard anyone, turn it up, turn it up? Usually they're talking about music when they're saying that, or at least at our house I hear. If we're driving down the road and say, turn it up, turn it up, I know what, you're supposed to turn it up, you know? Uh, you're supposed to turn that knob. And what you're doing when you're turning it up, like they're saying, you're turning up the amps, the amplitude or the decibels, either one, however, whatever term you want to use, uh, in, in street language we say turn it up, or at least that's what happens at our house, turn it up. Well, um, you're turning up the volume button on a stereo set, on a radio, whatever you're turning up. The music, you're turning the volume button is what you're, you're talking about. So that's what we'll talk about today. When you're talking about sound waves, we're talking about the volume the amps, or the amplitude. And that is really what makes, it doesn't make the, it doesn't make the 
pitches higher or lower. We're not talking about the pitches now. We're talking about the loudness of the sound. And Mr. Lyle would do this, and, and please excuse me for knowing so, so, so very little about it, but it, it's, it's, it's in, the, in, in, in the song, it's got a P or two P's, and then it's got a thing, an arrow that, that's in the songbook. I, that has to do with singing how loud, right? If you got two P's, that mean, or one P means sing softer, not very loud, not many amps. And then if you got two P's, you really have to get soft. And then if you got, and I don't know what that thing's called. I hope Lyle isn't watching here, but if you got that thing that, that opens up like this, you're really supposed to get loud there. Or so they tell me. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong. You, you, you know what I'm talking about, though? You, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. That's where we're at today. Uh, human ear. We have, we have the bell. Uh, let me go to page 359. I'm on 359, and we will talk about how the... In, in how our ear hearing, uh, it, we can detect sound waves, and that is is we, we to, to grade that or to have a chart to go from. We say zero is what you can hear, okay? Zero decibels, and and <sighs> someone takes a breath, it probably puts you up there about 20 decibels, okay? And if someone just normal breathing and says 20 decibels, so you gotta be pretty close. I mean, you gotta have better ears than what I do to hear that. And the highest is 13. So we gotta range from zero to 13. And we call those bells. Well, I don't know that I heard much about bells. I have, and it's named after the man that invented the telephone. Alexandra Bell, what's his name? I uh, saw so here somewhere in the book, it tells us Alexandra Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone. He's the one that came up with the levels of amps on, on sound. And so they have set a standard that one bell equals 10 decibels. Okay, so I need to explain the decibel and the bell relationship. This is key because you'll need to know this to do your math problems here. The one bell is 10 decibels. Okay, you know the decimal system? Oh, I got 10 here. There we go. One bell equals 10 deci. You know what a deci is? 10? 10, 10? Okay, so it takes one bell makes 10 deci. Two bells is 10 times stronger. Three bells is 30 times stronger. It just keeps going. So you're working with a 10 ratio every time. Uh, let me put it this way. Yeah, you got the table there. Look at it on the bottom of 359. You have the table where it shows you a soft whisper, a normal conversation, uh, busy traffic, uh, gasoline. It goes on and on down the line. How many decibels there are. Uh, if you look in the back of your book, uh, let's see, we'll take that time to do that right now. We'll take a little break in this thing. In the back of your book, you have this chart right here. This is a thermometer, and this is zero, okay? This is where, uh, let's say, this is where in the Celsius thing, this is where water freezes. This is the coldest part. Anything below here, you can't hear. Now, this part of the thermometer is supposed to go on top of this part. You got it? This part here goes on top. So as you go up, when you get right up here, then you have to start back down here and go back up again. So on the right-hand side is... It's occupational sounds, that's work sounds. And on the left hand side, it's household noise. So as this goes up, the sound gets louder. And you get way up here at the top. Now, I can't read all those this morning, I don't have good enough lighting here. Uh, looks like about the loudest one on the household sound is, is, is shooting the gun. Uh, boys, you, you love to hunt. Put earplugs in your ears to hunt. When you go out to shoot, uh, oh, you can't hear the deer coming, or you can't hear the turkey gobble. Oh, yeah, that's true. So maybe you should use bow and arrow then. There we go. That's a safer, safer way for your ears, not to damage your ears. Well, let me put it this way. If you're going out specifically to do a lot of shooting, like clay pigeons and, like, and, and that type of thing where you're practicing, uh, be sure then to use them because it's time after time after time damaging your ears. 
Do you know, uh, I think I told you this before, but I'm just thinking about this, how you damage your ear. Do you know this ear here? This ear here is not as good as this ear. I can hear, if I want to hear something, I can hear better with this ear than I can with this ear. Ain't that silly? But you know why? Because all my life, I've, no, not all my life, but a large portion of my life, I've sat on a tractor and I've looked back like this to see what was happening. And you look back like this to see on a hay bind, you see the hay bind is always on your right hand side. You do the same way with your hay baler and all that is noise. So this ear gets more noise coming from the piece of machinery. And it's just a habit that I have that if I am disking, if I am plowing or whatever, I turn back like this. I turn to the right every time. And this ear has lost some hearing or has lost more hearing than this one. They both lost some, okay? Over the years, I, I, I'm losing my hearing. But this one is better. This ear is better because he's been protected. If I would have worn earplugs, I would have saved that problem. Now today we ride, or people ride cab tractors, and so that's supposed to help do that. Save your ears. So it's no joke, okay? This is no joke. I'm not some old grouchy man or grouchy teacher. It's no joke. Protect your ears and loud sounds. And, and if you work at a place of business or a machine shop where there's lots of machines running, lots of noise, wear earplugs. Do it. Save your ears. You will never regret it. I regret now not having, having earphones or something on my head as I work out in the field. Let's go to that uh, page uh, 360. Uh, let's talk about the tent. You have, if you have a bell, a bell, one bell equals 10 decibels. Decibels. I don't know how to spell decibels. D E C I bell. Yeah. Deci. Bell. So as it increases, every bell that you increase is 10 times stronger. Okay, it's just exactly like we figured in the mass ratio when we figured uh, uh, gravity. We, it, it works, it's the exact same scale. So you say, oh, okay, two bells are going to equal 20 decibels. Bells. Ha ha. Uh, wrong. Wrong. It's not right. 20 decibels. No way. This is 10 times 10. Okay? You cannot just go this so you got 10 times 10 equals 100 decibels. It increases every time 10 times more. So you got this. Uh, you can also see an example of this on page 360 at the top. You have that number that, are, you, uh, that zero is where we start out with our ear. We can hear zero and then we can up to 13. So you see how range, what, how many decibels our ear has a range? It's 13. You got to go 10 times, 10 times, 10, 13 times. And then you get that number. Do you know what, how to say that number? It is on the first full, or it's the second paragraph there, just above the example 414. It says, thus the human ear can detect sound waves as much as 10, uh, it's not million, it's not billion, it's a number before that. So I'm, I'm assuming, is that trillion? Do you know? Is that trillion? 10 trillion times its threshold before it might be damaged. That's an incredible range, she says. Isn't that amazing? God made her ear to handle 10 trillion deaths. I, I don't know if it's trillion. You see, I told you I didn't know. Is it 10 trillion? I'm not sure. Decibels above from zero to 10 trillion decibels. Wow, that's a marvelous wave detector that yeah, you want to take care of. There we go. I need to put that last little bit in. 
So, when you look at the experiment, you'll need to know how to figure these decibels, okay? You'll need them on a study guide, you'll need them on tasks, you really need them in life. So if you increase it, uh, let's say you increase it uh, three decibels, let's say you, your sound in your, in your car, you're going down the road, you say, Mom, turn up the thing, and let's say it's playing at, at um, uh, let's use bells, we're saying playing at two bells and you increase it to five bills. Okay, you go from two to five. So how many did you increase? Well, you subtract over here on the side, you subtract two from five, you got three. You increased it three bells, and I'm not doing exactly, maybe I should, but you multiply three tens together, to get your decibels. 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000. You have increased the sound. If you increased it three bells, you increased it 1,000 decibels. Whoa, got it? Uh, let me give you a little shortcut here. This is not allowed, okay? You dare not, you dare not, dare not know that I told you this, okay? So keep this under your hat. But every decibel, you add a zero. Every bell, you add a zero. So find out how many bells you increased, put a one and that many zeros behind it. So I increased it here, three. Look how many zeros I put, one, two, three. In the year, we went from zero to 13. We talked about that there. Count in the book, how many zeros did they, they put a one and how many zeros? 13. So every bell is a zero. So if you're wanting to change this, now he didn't tell you this, I told you this, don't, 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 don't take it from him. So first you have to, if you increase it or decrease it, find out how many bells it's different, okay? So if he increased it five bells, then you put a one and five zeros. If he decreased it five bells, the same answer. You put one and five zeros. That will tell you the difference. You knew that put larger or smaller. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. If you do the problem on page 360, you will want to use this example. Now, if you have de but, excuse me, if you have decibels, I should maybe have told you that. If you have decibels and you want to change them to a bell, you just move it. Let's say I got 510 decibels. Decibels. You just simply, if you got 510 and you want to make it bells, you just move it two places. You got 5.1 bells. Now, uh, yeah, anytime you want to change from a decibel to a bell, you move the decimal point two places. So if you're going, for, if you have the big one, if you have bells and you want to make it a decibel, you just add two zeros. Okay? So if you got 510 decibels, that would equal 5.1 bells. Did it get off? Get off, boy, you just about can't see them. Yeah, I think that's all I am going to have. Uh, you uh, have fun today, and I will see you on Monday for study guide and test on Wednesday. And uh, you have a good weekend.